So as I mentioned this time, we've got Ian Zelbo on minus 16. Ian, how are you keeping? I'm good. How are and, you? Uh, hey, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. We've, we've both been down with the curse, haven't we? We both had a touch of, of the vid. Um, me recently yes. and you a couple of weeks back. Because you were on holiday when you got it, weren't you? Or was it just before you went on holiday? It was just after. So I think I, I probably got something in Iceland and then my whole family got it. It was... It was how an did, ordeal, but how did you affect your guys? Were you still away while you got it, or when you got back? No, it was when we got back, like a few days later. We and were you actually realized. properly poorly with it? Because I, I can speak, I can attest to that. It is nasty. <laughs> yeah, I was. I didn't really get that sick. It was kind of the, I guess, the week or two after. I just didn't. I didn't feel productive. I was sleeping like fourteen hours a day. And, it doesn't it? Yeah, it really it was, does hit it was you rough. hard. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I had a project I was working on for John, and I was like, I, I just need more time. I can't, <laughs> I can't get this <laughs> that's done. The thing, you can't keep your bloody eyes open, can you? They're just dropping the whole time. You get to a point in the day, and that's it. You've just got nothing left to give. But hey. No, it was, it was we're, weird. But... We're both here now. Yep. Let's capitalize on this while we're both fit and healthy. So you, I know, are about to head off into the next chapter of your life. You're about to start at Brown's University in a couple of weeks' time, which kind of got me thinking, as a kid, art, was that something you just took too quickly? Did you always find you had a pen or you know a brush in your hand? Is that something that was always in your DNA? I'm actually, I mean, as much as I love like drawing, I'm really not great. Um, I think I, I started like my artistic journey, if you will, um, in like photography, actually. Um, my brother has always been interested in wildlife photography. And when we go on vacations, he's always taking these incredible pictures. And I started there. I think I bought my first camera. Maybe I was like 11 or 10 or 11. And I just started taking pictures of things. And then, you know, my, my love of Apple also came in there. And then I started taking pictures of Apple products. And then, and then I discovered 3D and kind of took those concepts I learned when I was younger with real photography and took them into 3D. So let's begin to talk. I'm really naive on the idea of 3D rendering. I'm guessing a lot of people listening, we've all heard Blender, which we'll get onto in a minute. But the whole concept of 3D rendering fascinates me because it's such a trick to the eye. We look at it and it's real. It's as real as it gets. So how did you begin to think of the idea when you were young of getting into 3D? How, I know you said it started with photography. Was it because of the three dimensional aspect of photography that you thought, right, the next stage is if I can recreate that and make it my own. I've always, I mean, I've always been obsessed with Apple and they always have these just incredible introductions and in their events. And I remember just being young and just watching them over and over again. And people would be like, wow, look at the phone. I was like, look at that video. <laughs> like I always just found that incredible, but I actually got into 3D like kind of as an accident. Um, it was during the pandemic. I was just on YouTube every day, of course. And I had a Blender tutorial just come up in my like YouTube recommended. And yeah, it was how to create a 3D donut. It's a very, very popular tutorial. It's something like 12 million views. And I followed it. And I mean, I, I loved it. It was, it was just so fascinating to me. Like before I would look at... Um, like those Apple videos. And I would think they do that like frame by frame. They're, they're drawing or like, how are they throwing phones in the air? Like, how do they do that? And it was, it was really cool to see like, you know, behind the scenes. And so it's as recent as a couple of years them. ago that you started to get into it. Yeah, it's about I don't know, a little more than two years. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So once you started to scratch the surface and look into, and was Blender the first tool it used? I assumed it was. Yeah. Is that pretty much yeah. the industry standard? Or are there other options? It's not really industry standard at all. It's just, it's open source and it's free. So there are tons of tutorials and that's kind of where everyone gets their start. Um, but some professional places are actually opening up to using Blender just because it's free and it's open source and it's it's just so much, I don't know, there's there's so much to do. But the, the industry standards are... Um, are basically Autodesk. So Maya, um, oh, I'm forgetting its name. Oh, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, um, Houdini, stuff like that. That's what's widely used in the industry, but they were created, don't quote me on this, like 20 years ago. Like they've, 
they've always been like that one that you use. It's like Photoshop, but now Blender comes along and makes things free, open source, like community driven. It's it's a really exciting program, but it's not that widely used in the industry yet. And is it reasonably intuitive? I mean, obviously you've taken to it very, very quickly. I'm not saying everyone could pick it up as quickly as you have, but it's one of those things if you apply yourself enough days and evenings, you begin to understand it and you can get into producing something meaningful out of it. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's definitely a little confusing to get started, especially just to learn like the, the ins and outs, like the controls even. It's just, it's not like, you know, WASD, you have to like hold shift to move and it's pretty complicated, but I don't know. I learned a lot quicker than I expected. I probably did that that donut tutorial. I'd say it was maybe six hours in total, right? Like, right. like different tutorials, mm-hmm. and then and then I was done. Like that's yeah, I've probably watched some random tutorials on specific things, but after that, like oh, I really so it's knew really what I was doing that one tutorial, and from there you just learn on the fly. Yeah, I was just trying out things. Um, mm-hmm. After that, I. I think the next thing I created was like an iMac concept. So <laughs> that's pretty fitting. So we mentioned that you're heading off to university, college or university. And I know there's a barrier difference between our languages. Are you going to university? I mean, I call it college, but it's a university. And what are you studying there? Is it the natural progression of where what we think you'd be studying? Is it some kind of 3D art that you're studying there? No. I'm no. Actually, <laughs> Politics. So, <laughs> no. Um, I'm th- so I don't have to um, even decide what classes I'm taking till I get there, but I'm going in planning on concentrating in computer science, some econ, and then they actually have some 3D courses that I would like to take, but mainly computer science. And without wishing your life away, have you got any idea of sort of longer term where you, you think you'd like to end up working? I mean, you've got a good start on life, let's face it, but I mean, I just wondered if you had any idea longer term what appeals to you. I mean, there's a, I don't know, for a while I thought um, something like, I don't know, like Apple or Google, but um, I don't know. Now that I know Apple so well and know the the ins and outs of the company, I don't know. As much as I love the company, that does not sound appealing. All of that secrecy, the, yeah. Yeah, see, talking as the sage old fart here, uh, now you've tasted the freedom of working for yourself, it's going to be mighty hard to begin working for somebody and singing to somebody else's song. It's, it's so hard to get used to. I did it for about three months in my entire life. And I can't, I can't sing off somebody else's hymn sheet for love nor money. I wonder if that might sort of strike you because you've tasted basically being your own boss already, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, John, John Prosser is technically my boss, but like, I mean, yeah, we, technically, we, we, we yeah, no, we, we play like iMessage games together. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's going to be a change, but I don't know. I'm really excited. Um, maybe like two months ago, there was an opportunity where I could meet Carl Pei, the um, co-founder of OnePlus, uh, used to be the CEO, and now he started up nothing. And just like talking to the people there, like a company like that is really somewhere where I, where I would want to end up like yeah, a maybe smaller there's more freedom startup there. Yeah. yeah and there's more room to grow than something at google where it's just like just another face in like, the, yeah in the wall so you mentioned john there uh obviously we're i mean i've seen you on the genius bar with with the guys and i think many of us will have got to know you originally for doing renders for john so how did that first come about because you know now we've learned that you've only actually been working in 3d art for a couple of years and yet very quickly you began doing work for John. So how did that introduction come about? Who reached out to who? Yeah, that's also an accident. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the best things in life tend to be. Yeah, so I guess I started creating um, these concepts probably from like August to November of oh, what year? 2020. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to just post them on social media. Didn't think I would get any recognition, but I just wanted like a, an easy portfolio, honestly, for myself so I could look back. Um, I started on Twitter. I had no idea that everyone on tech was on Twitter. Um, I started posting things and uh, actually Sam Cole mm-hmm. followed me. I must have had like eight followers. And, and Sam was one me. of the eight. <laughs> yeah, that was, good follow, good that follow. was incredible. That was, yeah. And so I actually started working with Sam, um, he 
he actually, uh, like I was showing him like what I was working on and he said, have you ever thought about doing renders for future Apple products? And I was like, actually, that would be, that's like a really good idea. Cause I'd always seen all of these, like all of these uh, renders of future Apple products. And um, I don't know if you know, Martin Hijack, is that his name? Yeah, I've seen the name on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. He used to make them when I was like eight years old and I'd be like, wow, that's incredible. Um, and yeah, and then I worked with him maybe like two or three videos and then he became close with John and then, I don't know, maybe two months after that, John reached out to me and said, I have pictures of an unreleased Google watch. You want to do it? <laughs> so at Actually, that point, he, he was putting a lot of trust in you then because obviously you didn't have yeah. a relationship then and, and he's giving over very very confidential schematics and, and CAD files and so on. Yeah. Um, I mean, I knew Sam pretty well at that point. I feel like we were close-ish friends, so he he could trust me. I wasn't just like a, a random Twitter account. So I realize we have to sort of dance with reasonable caution about some of the questions I'm about to ask. But okay. say the files... No, don't worry, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Promise it's not that kind of interview. I'm not going to suddenly burn you. Um, so the files or CADs that you get, say, from John, and of course you were working close with Luke last year as well, weren't you, on his big yeah. uh, reveal as well? Oh, that was, that was incredible. But let's talk about that then, actually, because we all know okay. about work with John. Let's talk about Luke, because that was a big one for Luke. I remember seeing him on Sunday evening on his podcast, and he was sweating. He was worried that it was all <laughs> going to come off. So that yeah. period of time, I guess, you were all working your butts off, right? And you kind of had... So these files, they're presumably from somebody, I'm assuming, within the Apple hardware chain, supply chain, that gets in touch with one of you guys and said, look, I've got some details that you may be interested in. Is that kind of how it would all start? Um, pretty rarely, uh, for the things I do with John, I don't think, I think the only thing was the iPhone 13, but the other ones, we don't actually get CAD files. Okay. Um, so how get, do they start then? So we either get, there's like three things we get. We get like screenshots of a CAD mm -hmm. file, mm -hmm. um, actual images of the device, but very, very blurry. <laughs> and, um, schematics like a schematic page like drawn out and very it's very basic and so i think that's what some like people don't realize what i'm actually doing they see um say like our, our macbook air leak they're like oh you got that wrong you you must have not had the right source most of the time it's like a, a puzzle for me we're not looking at finished products just sitting on a table it's never that way so where we think you're looking at a lovely clear image no, that's not the case. Oh, it is not lovely. It is not clear. Right, and right, it's right. Like, and it's like half of an aluminum casing, and I have to create a computer out of that. So and, then you'll begin and, to try to work out the dimensions and the sizes. You know, for instance, on the 14 that's coming now with the new pill and punch, you would have been trying to work out from what you were given roughly how far that's going to sit down from the top, the dimensions of the two elements there, and that's the skill of what you're doing to try and make it look as realistic as possible. Yeah, and then there's the source also gives us like um, just some I love that, information. The it sounds <laughs> just so mafia like. I love it. The source. Oh, it, it feels great. <laughs> <laughs> they give us just like I don't know. Say they say, oh, it's a little more rounded than that. So I, I have some back and forth with them through John. Right. So they're reasonably involved then because obviously they've seen something physical, be it a, uh, a, as you say, a CAD file on the desk, or that, but they probably have seen something better than you. So you're then sending yes. back what you've made and say, are we getting somewhere near? And there's a bit of rapport back and forth. Yeah. And sometimes it's completely, um, oh, I can't think of the word, conversational. Um, like something we're working on currently, like I didn't have, there were no schematics, no images, no CADs. It's just, they said something to me and I made it. And so it's not easy <laughs> some of the so time. So if we were talking, we, we began talking about your work with Luke, was that, that would have been about March this year, I guess, wouldn't it? Something like that. We're talking about the Mac Studio. Yeah. yeah. Say, I saw him on the Sunday sort of prefacing, saying I've got something big that's breaking. I think then on the Monday he kind of broke it, didn't he? About 3 p.m. UK. And how long had that, a, 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 a reveal like that or uh, working on something as big as that, how long a lead time do you guys get so that one, that one was very different. <laughs> that was, 
that was just a I, that was fortune <laughs> to get that to get right. that leak. Um, I I started maybe I'd say three or four days before, and it was that, just that late in the day. Yeah, and uh, it was actually later because that was just information from the source, and I created right. like we were going to label it as like a you know a concept um, because. We didn't have any concrete information. It was just what the source had seen. Mm -hmm. And then I'd say like maybe a few hours before his podcast even, <laughs> he got these uh, images of the products in, let's say, very final. Um, <laughs> hmm, how do, I don't know how to say this. Very polished. We'll go with oh, that. so by that stage, you knew you on, it was real. You knew that something pretty serious was happening. Yeah. Um, and we had like a, a group FaceTime. It was me, John, Sam, and Luke. And we were like, we were trying to go over it and trying to figure out everything we could. And um, so clearly you were working right up to the wire. And, and, and it's obvious from what you're telling us now that through the progression, you, you had a source that was very close to the end product then that they were, because I mean, what you produced on that, Monday, I don't know, because Luke didn't show anything on the Sunday. It was the Monday was the big reveal. It was so, so close. I, I mean, yeah. I'm also thinking the pride and relief that you must have, because obviously you know no more than the rest of us push come to shove about what the product is actually going to look at, as good of sources as you have. So when you get something that right, you must be sitting back and re that must be a good day's work, yeah? Oh, it felt it felt so great. We had like a a group chat of everyone when we were watching the event. We're like, "Oh my god, Mag Studio!" It's <laughs> exactly what we said. Because it came um, late on in the event as well, didn't it? I seem to yeah. Recall. We we were sweating for a while, but yeah. Um, seeing because we also leaked a purple iPad and a green iPhone. So That's seeing right, that, of course. That's seeing right. that too, we we were feeling really good from the same source. It was the same, yeah. Same right, thing. yeah. So. I mean, Luke obviously reached out to you because he'd seen the work you've been doing with John. And you said that you started to work with John really by happy accident that Sam had followed you on Twitter. And obviously we know the relationship between those two. So then he, it started off with a, a Google Watch file, yeah, you say. The pixel, and then from the there, pixel watch. And then you started was, working together from there. Yeah. And that it was, that was actually one of the, the first one was actually really incredible. It was like basically a mock website of the pixel watch and had like just like at least 20 renders of like different angles that was really quite cool but and then the next thing we didn't talk for maybe like a month and then um he dms me and he's like you can't you can't publish this obviously and then sends it and it is a blue macbook air that was that was an incredible moment and and then we we did a, a whole lot of projects after that. And I, I recently asked him, like, when did you know that I was going to be doing everything for you? And he said, well before even the first project we did together. He strikes so, me as a very shrewd man, for sure. You know, he's obviously got a very good business brain on him amongst other facets. But I mean, it's very clear that he can see a vision and knows where he's going to with it. And obviously he saw a diamond in you and decided to work with you from very early on. Yeah, he's... He really, there's so much stuff that happens behind the scenes where he's, oh, he's, plan he's planning months in ahead. And it's just incredible to work with him and be able to see what he's doing. Like I'm guessing it must be quite an inspiration, mustn't it, to be seeing somebody, you know, I, I don't like to use trite terms, but I mean, the guy is a little bit of a genius. And, oh, he is. You know, to see, to be working with somebody that close up and to see almost hear how his brain's working and how everything progresses must be a brilliant learning curve for you. Yeah, and then also just to, I, I mean, I've always been interested in Apple leaks. I've probably, I was probably like eight years old the first time I went to 9 to 5 Mac. Um, so being able to actually see like, I don't know, you, you hear like, oh, there's supply chain issues. But actually being able to see what that is. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's, it's just, it's so incredible to be actually a part of this community. So... As we record this, we're probably, I guess, three, four weeks away from what everyone calls Techtober. And actually, that's chronologically rubbish, isn't it? We're more than three or four weeks more. So you know what I mean? We're getting into that silly Tech season now. September. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you know, the Samsung event, the unfolding event has just happened and we're getting into the season now. So that brings me around to the part of the interview where I wanted to talk to you. Again, I'm going to tread carefully to stop you in any delicate positions. I would guess and assume you have probably got some knowledge of what we may be getting, if that's vague enough. Um. Do you mean like the lineup or? Yeah. So say, I mean, the things I was going to talk about with you a little bit later on were some of the big things. I mean, the AR VR headset we think is probably going to be early next year, but it, later this year, I'm thinking we'll get the Mac Pro. Yeah. Probably two Apple Watches because they're talking now about the Apple Watch Pro, if that's to be the name. And of course, yeah. the staple diet of uh, front page tech, the iPhone 14. So at this point in time, how much do you would you be prepared to say that you know about what we may be getting in form factor of those if indeed we're getting those items? I know z- like nothing about the Apple Watch. Like, right. Okay. Not even not even a little bit, and I don't want to. We- we've had some we've had some issues with the Apple Watch before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I think I think John is treading lightly. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, iPhone 14, we basically know everything. Um, except is that pretty for, much? I mean, everyone's saying the same things now. You know about the camera bump, about the obviously the pros having the the new layout on the front and the bigger camera. We know about only having the the bigger phones again. The pros having a better processor, the new processor. Yeah. By this stage, for us layman, is that and you're in the know? Is that pretty much a slam dunk now? The fact that everybody's saying it does that pretty much mean yeah. Yeah, around this time of the year when um, case manufacturers are getting in these CADs that match all of the other previous schematics and everything, it, I mean, another Apple Watch Series 7 could happen, maybe, but yeah, I'm like 99.9% confident that that's what we're getting. And have you seen anything about the Mac Pro? Because that's the one thing that I, I was writing a blog about it this week. It just has gone so dead and so quiet. I mean, we know it's coming. It has to come. Yeah. Um, when was it? I'd say like August of last year, mm-hmm. we got some schematics. Um, and then we got more schematics that matched those, maybe like November or December that year. And then we kind of just went quiet with it. Um, it's just, it's too early. And we weren't, because of the nature of the source, it could have changed. And we didn't want to take that that chance. But um, John and Sam have talked about this specific schematic thing we saw. Mm-hmm. Um, they keep calling it, this is funny, they keep calling it a hexagon. They I've can't count. They can't count. It's an octagon. <laughs> <laughs> We've just called the man a genius, but he's an in, a, a numerate genius. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to happen, but... They've pretty much described it. Probably the most I can say is think a, a trash can Mac yeah. Pro, but then they decided to flatten the size. So I don't know if anyone's, because uh, you've got a fairly new launch website, which has got most of your portfolio on it, zelbo.myc, right? That's the correct domain. And there's, there's some lovely work on there. I was looking on there this week. In fact, I did nick an image and put it on my blog. I did credit you. But um, there's, there's a Mac Pro on there, but that's very much looks more like the Mac Studio now. So that was drawn a little while ago, I take it. I actually don't. I don't know what it is. Have, have a look at your website. Have a I'm going to check my own website. <laughs> <laughs> I was on there this week because I wanted some good images and I knew where to look. Let's see. Because it was uh, almost... Oh, yeah. This one... This? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, that, that was just a joke. Um, oh, right. Very it's much like a concept. A, yeah, like a modern G4 cube. So with the images you put on your website, presumably you wouldn't put anything up there until the whoever, for want of a better term, your boss on a certain project is, be it Luke, Sam, John, whatever. Until that project's gone live with them, you wouldn't put anything up on your website. And after that, they're happy for you then to begin using images on Twitter and on your website, yeah? Yep. Um, and currently... I'm actually, uh, I have a contract with John, so I'm exclusively working with him. Um, that started, I guess, about a year ago. Um, but he lets me, w- he let me work with um, Luke for that one because obviously he and Luke and Sam are our friends, and so. Sure. So where you have that. in the past been published with Nine to Five with Mac Rumors and so on, I think Forbes as well. Now it's exclusively for John. Yeah, I know. I've never done anything for. Nine to five or Mac rumors. They just um, oh, they just use 
your images. They just use my images, yeah. Does that piss you off at all? No. I mean, it's a weird economy, isn't it? Because obviously, you know, you want to earn a living, don't we all? And this is what you do. This is your skill set. And I wondered if people, well, much like myself this week, <laughs> my blog, this, I guess, but, you know, people taking images. I mean, is, is it, are you happy enough for people to be using them? Yeah. Um, I mean, I post them on Twitter. I, what I'm not happy about is when um, accounts sometimes even like Photoshop out my watermark mm -hmm. and post mm -hmm. it with no credit. Like, there's yeah, like cool. thousands of those accounts on Instagram. I mean, that really bothers me. Sometimes I, you know, go after them with the old DMCA or DCMA, DMCA. I don't know what it's called. But a, a copyright a, strike. Yeah. So yeah, saying this isn't yours to use. You need it to be credit kind of thing. Yeah, but like websites like Nine to Five, Mac, Mac Rumors. Yeah, obviously. That's and fine. your contract and work with John, then will that be affected at all by going to university off to college or not? Or will you still be able to fit in your college work around John's demands? Yeah, um, that's interesting. I have been thinking about that. Um, I'm pretty confident that I can do it. I've just told him I need, I need more flexibility. <laughs> um, like previously, it was like, okay, we're going to release this project in like two days. Let's let's work on it. And obviously, he's been flexible, but I might need a lot longer <laughs> now. I just don't know what my workload is going to be. But I'm I'm gonna I'm definitely going to try to do it as and much as possible. We've, we've spoken, say, about the project with Luke. And if we use that as a benchmark and then compare it, say, to the work you get with John, with the autumn events coming up now, would it have been generally, is it, is it too early to have started to get the leaks from the higher up in the food chain through? Would you be expecting to get busy over the next three or four weeks if indeed you do get lucky and somebody reaches out? Would it have started yet or does it tend to be fairly close to the event. I suppose the closer to the event, the better it is for you guys, right? I didn't realise. I thought once the source had been in touch, once that would be it, they'd cut and dry. But from what you're saying, there's normally some dialogue as you begin to do the first drawings. They'll have mm -hmm. a look and say, yeah, that's fairly close. Yeah. I'm, John, I never talk directly with the sources, but I right. can say, yeah. I can be like, John, can you ask them this? And then he sends like a screenshot of them, of them yeah, talking. Yeah. So whilst talking, John, and I think I'm right in saying this, his new set for Front Page Tech on YouTube, that is you, right? Yeah. That's now, that's me. crazy. That is crazy. That looks so real. Everything we see is you. You've drawn that. You've created that. Yeah, it's all, it's all in Blender, actually. You is, trick with the mind, boy. Free that's, software. That's unreal. That's, that's so ridiculous. Because cool. it looks just you know, the detail of the, the, the picture, the frame picture in the background, you know, the toilet roll unfolding, everything about it is just so realistic. It looks so sharp. I mean, that's obviously a finished file. It's not a video file, I take it, is it? It's a finished file. Like what he uses yeah. is a Because he just green screens then drops it in, yeah. So yeah. for context then, are those files massive? I can pull it up. <laughs> yeah, I'd be interested to know because obviously I've got I've got fairly good knowledge of audio files. I'm gaining a very good knowledge of video files, which can be frighteningly big. I mean, the file I'm recording for this interview now, I know will take probably five, six hours to upload. I normally leave it going overnight because it's going to be uh, it's probably a, a 15 gig file, something like that. So I just wondered how the detail that's gone into that. I didn't know what the final exported kind of file size was. Yeah, so it's just a basically a regular 4K image, um, 10 bit. It's about 15 megabytes. Oh, so it's, oh, it's so, not that big at all. No, so it's he really just green small. screens it and drops it on. Yeah, and so because that's something we can all look at. It, I know he had a long time in in the sort of the gestation period of that. How long are you working on that with him for? Because it's a detail that still get. I know I'm looking at a picture, but still, it's, with even with that knowledge in my mind, it, it just looks so real. Let me let me try to pull up the the previous tries because oh, that's cool. really yeah 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 I, yeah yeah. So then let's have a look at these early workings for John's set. Then are you reckon about six months this okay. took you start to finish? Yeah, this was this was probably in February, maybe. Okay, yeah. So you begin to see the kind of direction it was going. And yeah, that's like how a, did it work then? He'd he'd come to would he sketch something out and send it to you? Or it would just be him with the ME or you talk and he'd say, Look, I've got this idea, I want it to look like this. 
Yeah, he actually, he just said he wants something like a like a late night show. That was his. That was his goal, I guess. Um, and then he I gave like not me. Trying I don't to know if you know. Up. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if you know. Do you know Film Riot? Is that what's called Film Riot? No, it's like a. It's this YouTube channel. They have a a set kind of similar to this, and he told me to not base it off of that, but use that as inspiration. Mm-hmm. And then this is the next. This is the next one. This one's really funny. This is where you start getting, you know. The- okay, right now it's honing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I imagine, again, if I'm reading the man right, that he's got quite an exacting idea in his mind of how he wants things to look, and unless it looks right, he won't use it. I don't know. I know. This was a lot. This was a lot of trial and error. Like, yeah, I, th- I think he knew what he wanted, but but he didn't know how to say it. <laughs> Maybe yeah, yeah, putting that. over. And sure. this is this is another version, right? Sorry. Yeah. So it's beginning to get much, much closer to it now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Here I'll show you. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, so now you really can begin to see the detail that's coming through, and that's obviously not too far for being finished. Because you guys don't live particularly near together, do you? No, I've never met him in person. He actually, I don't think anyone's met him in person. Arkansas, like, like, Sam's not met him in person, is he? I don't no, think. I don't, not yet, no. No, he's an enigma. Oh, no. He locks wait, away he, in a cave. No, he hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I've so met Luke in person, not Sam yeah. yet, but. Because again, you and Luke, because you you are reasonably sort of on, on the east side, aren't you? At least, yeah. It was like a two-hour train ride. I like spent the night at his house. It was right, quite a yeah. fun time. Pretty cool times. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, now we talked about the set there as well. Then I was going to ask. Uh, there's a couple of things I've got in, in in mind. I wanted to ask you before I forget. I know a lot of your work is actually done, ironically, on PC as yeah. opposed to Mac. Now, you know, you said you yeah. loved Apple from the youngest days and that's all you're interested in drawing. What's the need for having to work on PC then? Is it just the program is more suited to, or it's a PC-only program, Blender? Um, no, so Blender's actually pretty reasonably, um, I mean, it runs uh, universally um, so on ARM Macs, mm-hmm. which is great. And then they recently added uh, Metal compatibility for GPU rendering. But I mean, the power just isn't there yet for um, Apple Silicon and GPUs. I when I was at Luke's house, I tried his 64 core M1 Ultra, like completely specked out, and it was I could use it, but it would just be I, I'd say like five or six times slower than my PC. Right. And, and then I don't know. It's not even the power. It's really the the optimization. Not really in Blender, but just with uh, with RTX cards. So there's um, optics rendering, which yep, is yep. just specifically ray tracing. And since you have these ray trace cores on the GPU, it's just so incredibly efficient. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, when we're sort of looking at Twitter, we're following people like Ming Chi Kuo and Ross and so on. I had Ross on not that long ago. When you read something from them, Presumably, does that log in the brain if it's ahead of time, say, and then you finally get some details through from John, Luke, whatever? Would you then go back to think, ah, oh, Ross said that we were talking about that kind of screen size. Do you begin to piece the jigsaw puzzle together with everything that's coming through online as well? Yeah, so I try to, I try to base it up, like completely on what I'm given, just so there's no mix-up. But um, often I'm just talking to John, and I'm like, oh, Quo also said this. So it's kind mm. of just, it's like he said this. We also have the same thing. It's kind of, it makes us feel better. Um, mm-hmm. And and John doesn't publish anything without having multiple sources saying the same thing. Like that's a, like a common misconception. Like some people say, oh, you didn't, you didn't check carefully enough for the, say the Apple Watch Series 7. There were like four different sources across Ooh, different same, yeah. branches of the company mm-hmm. giving the exact same flat Apple Watch. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think people that people that like to throw stones like that haven't been in that position. I mean, I haven't, but, you know, at least I try to do stuff online and try to publish stuff. And as soon as you put yourself out there, somebody's going to sling. Some, I mean, it made me laugh this week, the, the heat that Marquez has been getting over his back to college video. You know, it's like people just yeah. need to just wind it back a bit. It's the man's job. And, you know, occasionally he's going to make a paid for video, right? <laughs> it just happens. 
So, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah and when people began giving John that, as, as you said, everybody was coming up with the same stories. Even German was coming up with the same stories. You know, John wasn't alone. I guess he's just the one that attracts attention and it's easy to sling mud at him and it sticks kind of thing. But it's got to hurt, even if you're thick-skinned and been through it a few, a few times. I know he got pretty burned by that, didn't he? And sort of backed away from leaking for a while. And Yeah. I, I mean, it wasn't... Yes, that was hard because mm. we were so confident. Mm. Like we had pictures of a flat Apple Watch sitting on a table. Like that, <laughs> that, that, I mean, that was hard for me too. Like I was so, I was so convinced. And then people started coming after me saying, oh, you're, you're faking all of these leaks. And if, <laughs> if I was faking these leaks, not only would I be creating these 3D renders, I would also be a product designer. Like yeah. a company should hire me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, presumably you do take it as a team. If if it goes well, as you say, like with Luke's, it's mass euphoria, real big, you know, high fives. But then if it goes wrong at the last minute for whatever reason, again, I guess you all feel the, the pain and the hurt in equal measure, don't you? Because it's a team effort, yeah? Yeah. And I think what's what's the hardest for John is he's he tries to make everything so entertaining. And I don't know. I've been thinking about this recently. Okay. Say... Okay. Oh, so under a year. Okay, over a year before the MacBook Air's release, so like fourteen months, John says that the wedge is gone. It's going to have a flatter overall chassis, new colors, um, and it's going to be thinner, and it's going to have um, a larger function row. A hundred percent accurate. Everyone is like, John is the best leaker ever, right? That's what we said. But since he wants to make this fun. He wants to make the videos exciting and have these 3D renders. It's more possible to see these small inconsistencies. And that's why everyone was saying that we got this MacBook Air wrong, even though, I mean, they changed a few things, but we had, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty, yeah, pretty spot on, wasn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, we, we've spoken about Apple Watch, um, we've spoken about the iPhone 14, you, you know, you've said, that, yeah, that's locked in now, we know what we're getting. Mac Pro, yeah, there's some conjecture out there as to what we may yeah. be getting. Um, AR, VR headset then. First of all, are you a gamer? Do you use headsets? Do you use the Oculus or? I've probably, I've used the Oculus like once and it was so at not, school. Right, not, okay. Yeah. So AR, VR is not a big part of your life then at the moment? No, honestly, I don't know. I, I've always been iffy on like VR, AR, I see, I see a future definitely. Um, until there was a, oh, I don't know who leaked it. It was, it was uh, a quote from a, an engineer on the Apple, I guess we're calling Apple vision team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they said, like, think of being able to, to be in a, a virtual movie theater and watching a movie on like a, a hundred inch screen that looks like completely real, indistinguishable from reality. And like that, that's very exciting to me, but I don't really see, I don't know. I don't, I don't really game and I don't need a, a VR game. So with the headsets, how interested are you in looking at the, the renders that are going around of those? And, and would you imagine, because obviously you've got a pretty good foot in the, in the industry now, with the latest uh, renders that we're seeing, would you say by this stage, assuming it's probably going to be a release early next year, that those renders are pretty accurate? Or have you had a chance to look at anything and sort of just reject them for whatever reason? Yeah, so I'm, I haven't really seen many. There was, like I have my own and I based that off of um, the information. I don't know if you know that that publication. No. They, they had a, a source, an engineer, basically right, right. draw, draw like not, not 3D, just draw what they had seen. And Apple has pretty recently taken legal action against them. So I'd assume that's a, that's a pretty good indication. Look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it, I don't know. That's, that's really, that's really all we've had. We've had other sources um, say things like New York times said ski goggles, but that, that's really it. We're, we're, we don't have a lot of we're poking in the dark a bit. I guess if it is to be early next year, and I know there's been this talk there could be a January event for the first time in ages, and I guess that could be your Christmas ruin then. If, <laughs> if there's going to be a January event, you could be very busy at the end of this year. Oh, yeah. 
But uh, I mean, again, I know they're going to be high money and everyone's assuming that Apple will come in and really steal a thun, you know, that they are after perfection. What's your, before I let you go, what's your take on if Apple like these leaks or not? Because there's, there's certainly a couple of ways looking at it. A, you could say look, they're going to be mighty pissed off that any details are getting out. On the other hand, trillion dollar net worth company that they are, publicity still must be king. And they are getting a bootful of free publicity, good publicity. How would you think in the corporate world Apple feel about the leaks that come out? That's a really interesting question. Um, without saying too much, I know mm. they they don't like what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so they uh, see your work then, you know that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't like us. But I think these, I don't know, these less um like the visual renders that's i think that's hard for them like having people see the products early but i mean i don't know for sure but someone like mark german where he's just saying stuff mm -hmm. like new colors like flatter edge like i feel like they don't care as much about that because mm, that's it's, more generic it's, yeah and it's educating consumers before without like i don't know i don't want to say like spoiling their reveal but mm. yeah but again but I, I, have, I have no I, I mean, no you know, information on that. working up to September now, we know that in the next few weeks, I mean, it's already peaking, but we know that it's going to get even more mad and there's going to be so much coverage out there of what we're expecting that it can't... I, I've thought about it long and hard and tried to think about it from a business point of view and I, I just don't know if it can be a bad thing because at the end of the day, they, they're going to have the laugh, last laugh. They're the only ones that genuinely know what they will be releasing and they presumably, particularly with the pre-recorded events, they could pull a re-record a section if they wanted you to say, no, you're not getting that yet. You're too close to the wire. We'll pull it back just to ruin your party. I mean, they've got that power, haven't they? Yeah. That's interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, I they could play games. I've often thought they just play games with this. I don't know. I don't think they're that. I mean, I know like uh, Craig Federighi in an interview said that they do pay very close attention to leaks, but I don't think it's like, I don't know. I don't feel like they're that involved in it. It's interesting that you, you said with certain clarity, though, that they don't like the work that you guys are doing, because obviously just you're accurate and getting very close to the wire. But it's interesting you say that, you know, because you often wonder, do they, do they know these names that we all take as daily names in our lives? But from what you're saying, yeah, they do. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they know me. They, they know John. <laughs> oh, they, if they know John, they're going to see your name on there because your name's, you know, it's synonymous with now. Anytime an image comes up, it's, it's your name on there. So I, I think they're going to know your name too. I think your ideas are working at Apple. Probably not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, actually, could... just before the interview, you were showing me uh, the phone you're using at the moment, the Nothing. Oh, yeah. I was... Let's talk a little bit about that because you were saying that they're quite a cool independent company and yeah. so on. So okay. this is the one with the, the really cool lights on the back that light up in different fashions for different ringtones and different people yeah. and different friends, yeah. Is it a good phone to use? Um, so I'm actually, I'm thinking about doing a review for it on right. uh, from Pitch Tech, like the website. So that'll yeah. be pretty interesting. Um, I don't know. Was that sent to you? Or, I mean, do you get sent product these days? Oh, no. I no, mean, you still yeah, have to buy. I, I, yeah, I get sent like accessories and stuff like, like Nomad sends me a lot of stuff. This mic was sent to me, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. no, I, I bought this phone. Well, but yeah. um, I don't know. The company, it just interests me. I remember when the the leaks were coming out, they were saying nothing was making a, a mid-range phone with lights on the back. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be, this is so stupid. And then images started coming out. It's it's just cool. <laughs> it's It's unique. I don't know. It's does just, it take the from a design point of view? Does it take the box for you then? Just what they've done? It's so interesting. People say that it just looks like a like a transparent iPhone. Yeah, it just it doesn't. If you look closely, the these details are just hold it up again for us. Yeah, yeah. there's so the much detail, detail oh, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good shot. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and if you look closely, like there's there's different textures. There's I don't know. Just like as a designer, seeing that it's really. It's really cool to me, and um, it's just so different from mm. every other Android phone. Like, not even just the look, but what they're going for. They're going for like this niche designer brand, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I had the, I don't know, I'd say pleasure. I used a S twenty two Ultra <laughs> for oh, right. maybe a week before um, it was sent to me by a case company to drop test. So that was certainly fun. I did not like it. 
That is a $1,200 phone. And I was having just an awful experience. And this is a around five hundred dollar phone, and yep. I, but I mean, the user experience it. has been good. Yeah, it's. Would just, it make you switch? I don't know if it would make me switch, just because I'm so reliant on the you Apple ecosystem. Message. Yeah, <laughs> it, it might. It might just be iMessage. I mean, there's also like, I mean, I have like every known Apple product. Mm. I do. I do want to use it as like a a second phone or like a business line, though. Yeah, I yeah, really yeah. think. I don't know. It's. It's just so interesting. It does and then look also, beautiful. Yeah, and it's just like the the OS is just so clean. Like compared mm. to um, Samsung's One UI, it was just cluttered. It was there were like duplicate apps. It was just like, oh, it just it it hurt me to use. And this is just, oh, I don't know. Everything everything is so clean. The lights you don't really notice that much. Like if you're just using it like a phone, I mm-hmm. I don't know. I haven't really paid attention to it. But I had the I think I can say this. Sure. Um, I had the opportunity of seeing the phone maybe like a month before its release um, just by chance, not through John or anything. Mm-hmm, uh, Carl mm-hmm. Pei, the CEO. and Yes, founder. you mentioned his name early on, yeah. Yeah, he, he just posted on Twitter that he was doing a, a small meetup event in downtown New York. And I showed up and it was just like this room with a pool table Carl, Sam Sheffer, the YouTuber, and just like a, a few other employees. Like no one else was there. <laughs> it was it was just us. So I, we I got to Yeah, I got to talk with Carl, talk with um some people on his software team, which was cool because that's what I'm hoping to go into. I don't know. It's sure. a it's a really exciting company. And have you been running the beta of iOS 16 on any of your devices or not? Yeah, I have uh, beta five on here. And how's that running for you? And what you are you liking the look of it? Yeah, I, I love oh the lock screen looks it looks incredible. Really? I love it. Um beta one, honestly, was probably the the most stable. Do you of know betas? I've mentioned, I think, I don't know if it's just before we start recording or not, but Sammy from Mac Rumors was on a couple of weeks back and he said exactly the same. The earlier betas were the most reliable ones, and the further yeah. it's gone on, the more buggy they've got. Like beta three. I couldn't play music. I would go into Apple Music, press play, and the app would crash every single time. Right. Beta beta four, AT and T just would not work. So mm-hmm. I had no I had no cell service. So that was always fun. And I would have yep. like actual kernel panics. Like on a Mac, you know, if you it would say system panic. Seems, like, yeah. That was yeah. Beta or is this beta five? Beta I don't know. Whatever I'm on, <laughs> the latest one. It's a lot used, better. Have you used Stage Manager yet on a Mac or an iPad? No, I use I, my. I'm, I'm trying to get the uh, the feeling on that. Sammy loved it, but a lot of people are saying mm, still not the answer. I, I've tried it. I don't have it. I don't have Ventura on my Mac because I use it for work. Yeah, right, yeah. And, I, and that I just not prepared I can't to have something that's unstable. Yeah, but sure. I, I've tried it. I don't really. I don't know. It seems confusing, unnecessary, and I'm clunky. somewhat. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm someone who loves to multitask. Like yeah. when I go on my Mac, I have like 40 applications open with different Photoshop tabs. And that's just, it doesn't appeal to me. What Mac are you working with at home at the moment? I have the base M1 Pro uh, 14 inch. Right, MacBook Pro. yeah. And it's, well, it's just it's, Photoshop. No, I mean, I've, yeah, I mean, I've been using the 16, uh, one of the same, the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And it's uh, coming from an Intel Mac. It's just... <laughs> day and night it's, it just gobbles everything up i mean this is, i say this and probably find that the video isn't recorded or something but i mean it's um they're just a beast of a machine they really are they just eat through anything that i can throw at it i'm not a high high end user but as you say photoshop some video works and editing and audio work is kind of where it's at yeah. for me but they're just awesome bits of kit aren't they awesome bits of kit oh it's it's so great and honestly just the screen having mm. that mini led screen for photoshop it's so color accurate yeah, like it's it's really great. The only thing is, I think I need a little bit more power for um for Final Cut because mm-hmm. it's like I'm not working with videos. I'm working with individual, sometimes six K frames, right? And so I have to use um I have to like import all of the frames and then put them together through Final Cut. Yeah, and that that takes a, a long time. <laughs> I but, wish I'd learned Final Cut. I'm an Adobe man, so for me, it's uh, Audition and okay. Premiere. 
Uh, and I, I still to this day think I really should try and get my head around Final Cut just because I understand it to be even better optimised for Mac. Yeah. And I I'd mean, find the speeds and, you know, I would just find probably everything. If I could just get my head... And I'm trying to think, can it be that different? At the end of the day, it's still cut and chop. It's, it, yeah. can't, it can't be that different, can it? I don't know. I, I really enjoy Final Cut, but then there's also um, having like a master audio track in Premiere is a... Yeah. That's a big plus. Yeah, but of course, I can bounce the audio straight out of Premiere over to Audition, do the edits there, and then bounce it back. And then the two work beautifully together. And it yeah. really came from the fact that I've got a design background. So for me, InDesign and Photoshop are the two that I used initially out of the, the suite of apps. And then I got into all the rest of it. But once you kind of know Adobe, everything is pretty similar. But I still wish yeah. I'd got my head around a uh, final cut. I need to begin looking at it, I think. I need to yeah, play with it. It's not too late. It's It's really really simple to start. Uh, that sounds like I've got a personal tutor on, online then. Good stuff that you just offered yourself. Thank you for that one, Ian. I've got it in the diary. I'll be calling you soon. So um, if people are looking to hook up with you, we've mentioned your great website, which you've got your portfolio on, which is zelbo.myc. And of course, you're over on Twitter under your name as well, Ian Zelbo. And uh, you've got regular images going up there as well. And you're just a good chit chat on Twitter as well. That's always a good look for. I've got notifications turned on for you. So I, I always like oh, to see no. you saying, oh, yes, oh, yes. And with the time difference, it makes for very interesting reading. So, you know, I know we've uh, had to delay this a few times, but I really, really enjoyed just pulling back the layers and understanding what you do and uh, how you go about your business. It's fascinating. It really is. Yeah, this was really fun. I'm glad we, glad we got to do this. I know I... I'm sorry. I was really busy. I had to. No, 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 no. It's, you know, delaying. I'm glad we got it on. I knew, you know, sometimes good things you just have to wait for. And then maybe what we'll do once you've been at uni for a while and you've got your feet under the table there, maybe I'll get in touch again and see if you've got some time to let us know how you're getting on with blending it. No, that's a bad pun of working everything together <laughs> with college and, sorry, yeah, with, uh, you know, with Ian, Luke, Sam and college and see how life's treating you. Yeah? How's that sound? Absolutely. Sounds great. Wicked. Fantastic. Ian, thank you so much for your time. It's been brilliant having you on. Thank you. Thank you.